Welcome to the service for Sunday, May 31st, Pentecost. We ring the bell, reminding us as I ring the bell from my childhood that our church bells ring, calling us into worship. And so I ring the bell, reminding us we bring ourselves into worship. The Christ candle has been lit, and so we give thanks for the light of Christ in your lives and the light of Christ as we gather together. This is Pentecost today, and so you'll see that there is a Pentecost happy birthday balloon. Happy birthday to the church, and there's a candle on top with a flame in it, and we are thinking about Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the birthday of the church. It's a Pentecost candle and a windmill, which I'll talk about later. Pentecost comes from the Greek word for 50. It refers to 50 days after Passover. Pentecost is when we celebrate as Christians the Holy Spirit descending on the disciples and the believers in Jerusalem. It's also referred to as the birthday of the church. <clears throat> I want to share with you this lovely um, introduction for Pentecost today. Excuse me. <clears throat> comes from Reverend Mark Davis. It's called Left Behind and Loving It, Living as if God's steadfast love really does endure forever. When he wrote this, he said he was thinking about Dr. Zeus and Lin-Manuel Miranda, who you may know as one of the creators of the musical Hamilton, and he also recently was in the musical um, the second Mary Poppins movie. And so this is done in um, like a rap format, which I don't very often do. The words are lovely. It also reminds me as you're listening and even as it begins, a little bit like it was the night before Christmas. But I'm gonna share it with you at the top of the service to help us get um, thinking about and reminding us of the story. So. Here we go. The Pentecost story. Twas the day of the 50th, the Sabbath of Sabbath, when they were all gathered, an annual habit. They saw their Lord buried, then risen, then taken. They had their hearts broken, but now were awakened. When all of a sudden there rose such a clatter, the people in town came to see what's the matter. The sound of strong winds, Tongues dancing of fire, the gathered ones filled with their true heart's desire. With languages, idioms, dialects empowered, they each found their tongue and they used it that hour. <clears throat> they each found their tongue and they used it that hour. Excuse me. <coughs> and those who had gathered were astonished and wondered this strange thing onto which we have blundered? Are not these folks common, unlearned, unlettered? How do they speak in the tongues of their betters? We've traveled the world in Parthia and Rome. We call Cappadocia and Media our home. Now these ignoratia are trying to say that God works in this mysterious way? All of them wondered, but some of them thunk. These people are babbling because they are drunk. These people are babbling because they are drunk. Then Peter stood up and had something to say. You know we're not drunk at this time of day. The thing that is happening that makes us awoke is, the very, is that very thing that the prophet Joel spoke. In days that are lasting, the true God declares, I'll make me a people, a people who dare. We dare to see visions of justice one day. We dare to have dreams like my man, MLK. We dare new equalities, not classes of old. We're benders of genders and breakers of codes. This thing you see here, how we're behaving, is God being present in a world that needs saving. It's God being present in a world that needs saving. Don't sit there and wonder how commoners blabbeth. Wonder instead that this is true Sabbath. A people on fire, all spirit inspired, 
living the true path that God has required, led by the one who was unjustly killed, by hands with violence honed and skilled. But then he was raised, because death has no might to hold down the one who does what is right. He is the one who's br who is breathing this breath, whose spirit unleashed, and the world is refreshed. The spirit's unleashed, and the world is refreshed. Reverend Mark Davis, who wrote for us to share this little rap to set our hearts and minds thinking about Pentecost. So thank you for, for that, Reverend Davis. Our call to worship is all about Pentecost, about catching the wind, the breath of God, and I've got a red and white pin, pinwheel today. Red is the color of Pentecost. I'm wearing red, red for the gift of the Holy Spirit. So red and the wind. Try to catch God, but how can you hold the wind? Try to copyright God's name, but how can you lay claim to the word that holds everything? Try to describe God's being, but how can you know what the Holy One will do next? This is our time to stand still, to let go, to await God's presence. This is our time to worship God. That was our call to worship. Let us pray. Let us pray. What a miracle it is, God, that we hear you when you speak. Sometimes you sound like the voice of tradition, some old song in a familiar setting. Sometimes you sound like the slap of a challenge delivered raw and roughly upon our comforts. Sometimes you sound like love passion in a fiery heart, or warmth wrapped as blankets around friends. Sometimes you sound like valor in a world inspiring courage, and sometimes you sound like nothing we have ever heard, the stunned silence of a world staring straight into the face of resurrection. No wonder we interpret this as tongues of fire dancing about our heads, or as springs of meaning uncoiling in our souls. No matter what it is, we can never comprehend it. We hear you in, we can never comprehend it all. We hear you in our own language, and so touch the miracle of prayer and work made one. Amen. And that prayer <clears throat> is offered to us today from Reverend Malcolm Sinclair. We have... We have music <clears throat> that Gail Tanner has um, played for us, um, tucked her iPhone into her grand piano at uh, into her grand piano at home, and so I am just going to um, grab my phone and play for you our first hymn. Our first hymn is "Spirit Divine, Attend Our Prayers." Spirit divine, attend our prayer. In our time for all of us as God's children, we think about Pentecost. We think about being able to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of God's breath in us. Excuse me. <coughs> it's 
So we talk about the Holy Spirit. We talk about the breath of God, the breath within us, and that we trust and believe as Christians the Holy Spirit is within all of us. So the breath of God winds are an important part of our life and they're great in our life. They help us fly kites, blow pinwheels, dry clothes on a clothesline, mess up our hair. Wind changes things like making a kite lift up into the sky so the Holy Spirit, the wind of God, changes our life as it blows in and through us. The breath of God lets us tell Jesus' story and share how Jesus' story changes our life. So as you think about the wind blowing in and through your life, think about Jesus being in and through your life and how that changes your life. I feel the winds of God today. <clears throat> Tuck the pinwheel there. This morning I've chosen again a Psalm 104, but chosen again Dr. Eugene Peterson's um, translation of it. In It's called um, The Message, his translation of the Bible. And I've chosen it because his words are wonderful for us and help us think about <clears throat> the strong breath of God. O oh, my soul, bless God. God, how great you are. Beautifully, gloriously robed, dressed up in sunshine, and all heaven stretched out before your tent. Isn't that a wonderful image? You built your palace on the ocean deeps, made a chariot out of clouds, and took off on wind wings. You commandeered winds as messengers appointed fire and flame as ambassadors. You set earth on a firm foundation so nothing can shake it ever. What a wildly wonderful world, God. You made it all with wisdom at your side, made earth overflow with your wonderful creations. Oh, look, the deep wide sea brimming with fish past counting sardines and sharks and salmon. All the creatures look expectantly to you to give them their meals on time. You come and they gather round. If you turn your back and they die in a minute, take back your spirit and they die, revert to original mud. Send out your spirit and they spring to life. The whole countryside in bloom and blossom. The glory of God, <clears throat> let it last forever. Let God enjoy his creation. Well, let me sing to God all my life long. Sing hymns to my God as long as I live. Oh, let my song please him. I'm so, ple I'm so pleased to be singing to God. Oh, my soul, bless God. This ends the reading of Psalm 104, taken from um, Scripture in the Message Translation. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> We've heard Dr. Davis's, uh, Reverend Davis's um, rap version of the story of Pentecost. Now we're going to hear um, in the second chapter of Acts, verses 1 to 21, in the New Revised Standard Version. So your, your minds and your ears have heard the story one way, and now we hear it again traditionally to place it on our heart. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. 
And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus, Pontus and Asia, Phygria and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jew and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. Peter addresses the crowd, but Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall not be turned to darkness, and the moon, sorry, <clears throat> the sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is a reading from Acts, the second chapter, verses 1 through 21. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts as we listen, as we reflect, be acceptable unto you, O Lord, who is our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We can, we talk about air quality <clears throat> a lot. We talk about it in terms of pollution, heat, the UV index, clarity. The air quality is a, react, is a result of our humanity's actions. The factories, the cars we drive, our air conditioning, what's happening with businesses, fertilizing. The air quality is essential because we all breathe and breathing is so important. Sometimes we hold our breath though and how many times have you seen someone who's anxious and you say to them, just breathe. Or how many times when you've been anxious have you needed to hear someone say, just breathe? Do you know the word conspire means to breathe together? In Latin, spare means breathe and con means together. So breathe together. Take a breath. Blow it out. We've launched a conspiracy. We can conspire today to be filled with the same spirit, to be enlivened by the same wind. This morning we're going to talk about <clears throat> breathing together, even as I'm struggling to breathe a bit with my cough, I'm sorry. The critical part about breathing together spiritually and thinking about our air environmentally, the Holy Spirit is called Ruach. It's a Hebrew word for Holy Spirit, it's Ruach. It's a feminine word, in the same way that in our French language we have masculine and feminine words. So Ruach, the breath of God, is center stage for us today. We as Christians breathe the, the Spirit into our lives. We breathe the breath of God. 
Pentecost happens today because Ruach, the breath of God, showed up. We worship because the Holy Spirit has showed up in our lives. The Holy Spirit is here in our music, our prayers, our scripture, our reflection. When we worship God, the Holy Spirit swoops in and around us and amongst us and knits us together through everything we do as we worship in our lives together as Christians. We are always free to choose to to choose how we will respond to the breath of God in our lives. The Holy Spirit is here at our home as I record this day. And we trust and pray the Holy Spirit is in your home and in your lives. So we remember the Pentecost story to help us get breathing. There is a lovely story that reminds us that um, our beautiful blue planet is wrapped up in a protective veil we call the atmosphere, which separates the air we breathe from that cold vacuum of outer space. It said the same ancient air just keeps recirculating, which means every time we breathe in and out, we're breathing stardust left over from the creation of the earth. The same scholar suggests that when Jesus let go of his last breath willingly, when he entrusted his spirit into God's hand, his breath didn't just disappear, but his breath hovered in the air and that it was so strong it did not dissipate. It grew in strength and volume until it was the mighty wind which became the Holy Spirit today on Pentecost. Isn't that a wonderful image that the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, is that breath, that spirit of Christ that he entrusted to God and so was never lost. God wanted to make sure that Jesus' disciples and followers were the inheritors of Jesus' breath. Pentecost is radically important because it ties together Jesus' words before the resurrection, Jesus' resurrection and the time to follow. Do you remember the stories of the disciples arguing about who would be the greatest? This is Jesus' final answer with the Pentecost. This is Jesus' final answer to the 120 who were there that day who weren't sure how to go forward. Before the day was over, we're told the church grew to a large number. Shy people became bold. Scared people became gutsy. Lost people found a direction again. The Holy Spirit, the breath of God, moved the disciples from sadness to joy, from survival to revival. The Holy Spirit empowered Jesus' disciples. The whole point of Pentecost was to transform the disciples. Pentecost is the answer to how they and how we carry out Jesus' last directives to be his witnesses. So how did they experience community? By the touch of the Holy Spirit, they could understand what everyone was saying. They were hearing about God's deeds in their own language, they were amazed and they were perspect. Then they were perplexed. The Holy Spirit gave the disciples, gave everyone who was there that day, a way to hear one another, to communicate the love of God to one another, to see what would be next. Pentecost is that for us. It is the breath of God. We are renewed again today. Think about the birthday of the church again. Think about how the Holy Spirit helps us to communicate to one another in many different ways. The Holy Spirit gave them the way to communicate to one another, to build that community. Pentecost is so important because we aren't equipped to do all God wants us to do until the Holy Spirit is active in our lives. The Holy Spirit enables us to do what we can't do on our own. It's the gift of God that brings us together. Pentecost is the way the church's future becomes possible. Without Pentecost, we would be, we would be people who could tell Jesus' story. But with Pentecost, we can live Jesus' story. 
In Pentecost, God breaks down barriers that divide us. The power of the Holy Spirit between us and among us helps us share our faith story. We live Jesus' story as we share it with one another. It's not just a quiet, comforting story, but a big, bold, Holy Spirit at work in your life story. The Holy Spirit made Peter brave that day to speak to all who were there to interpret what was happening. The fire and the wind of the Holy Spirit gave Peter the power to boldly tell all who were there that Joel's prophecy would be fulfilled. The fire and the wind of the Holy Spirit gave Peter the strength to share, to be the witness. The Holy Spirit helped Peter say and share God, Joel's prophecy. God declares, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The sons and daughters shall prophesy and the young men shall see visions and the old men can dream dreams. We can be brave too. That's what the gift of Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit, helps us to be brave too. To breathe. To share that the Spirit of God is in your life and that makes a difference. In this time of sheltering in place, are you finding more opportunities to consider what's happening in your faith life? In this time of sheltering in place, and for some that means there is more quiet time, for some that means you are active and busier, but in this time of sheltering in place, is there a time to listen to the dreams God is giving you, to listen to how God is guiding you? Can we take the beauty of Pentecost seriously? What miracles can the Holy Spirit perform in churches, in our communities, as it's embraced and celebrated in our midst? We are church in new ways. We're not in our building right now, but we are church as we worship, as we care for one another, as we continue to do outreach with the food bank, with the Inn of the Good Shepherd, in many ways. Are you uncertain about what we can do? Consider the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of Pentecost, is the gift of something to say. It's the gift of a word that can be spoken in a time of brokenness or tragedy, if people are lonely or sad. The gift of the Holy Spirit is a gift of word to say, a gift of word, word of faith to say. The Holy Spirit moves us from silence to language. At Pentecost, the first Pentecost, the Holy Spirit talked and the whole world heard the good news. At Pentecost, we're encouraged to keep the fire, the flame of the Holy Spirit going to witness, to hear, to expand the work of the Holy Spirit. How do we keep the flame, the Christ flame, the flame of the Holy Spirit active? There's a story that took place in a palliative care ward in a hospital. There was improvements in patients, in patients' well-being on certain days in the palliative care ward when a certain personal support worker, PSW, was working. When the physician wanted to investigate <clears throat> what was happening, why there was improvements in well-being on certain days, she went and spoke to the PSW. The physician asked the PSW what she was doing differently. And the PSW answered the physician, she was telling the people that God doesn't abandon them, that they are not alone, that God is with them. The PSW was telling them the Pentecost words from 2,000 years ago, God is here, God loves you, the breath of God is within you. We sing the hymn, Spirit of Gentleness. The chorus is, <clears throat> Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness. Wind, wind on the sea. We don't want to be placid in our faith. 
can you be encouraged <clears throat> to see that just as we need breath to live, so to live, we need to connect to God every day. Let the Holy Spirit blow within you, calling and free. Let the Holy Spirit guide you and breathe life into you every day so you can connect with God in ways that are most effective in your life, be it in prayer or singing or scripture reading or journaling, in the kind actions of others that reflect your faith like compassion. Or whatever your combination of that is, we need breath to live. So to live, we need to connect with God every day. Let the Holy Spirit blow in your life and guide your life. Peter boldly quotes Joel, that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Take a breath, fill your lungs with the breath of the God and call on the name of the Lord. Be encouraged. You can call on the name of the Lord every day. We know we're, we know we're told not to sit for too long, not to just lay in one place for too long, but to stretch, to walk around, to breathe, maybe lift some weights. When you do that, when you interrupt your routine to get up from where you're sitting or where you've been in one place, call on the name of the Lord. When you move, talk to God. When you sit, talk to God. Call on the name of the Lord. It can be creative. It can be creative. Call on the name of the Lord. Trust that the Holy Spirit blows through our lives. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit caused people to hear Peter's message and receive it and follow it. The Holy Spirit transcended all the differences to accomplish God's many purposes. Can we let the Holy Spirit fly in our lives? Can we be thankful for the work of the Holy Spirit in us and among us and around us as we stay connected and our church in the best way we can at this time? At the beginning of the sermon, we de I defined conspire, reminded you that conspire means breathe together. Let's breathe together. Let's breathe together the Holy Spirit and let's breathe together and say, come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Have a piece of music from Gail. Spirit of Gentleness. Spirit of gentleness. Thank you, Gail, for playing that for us. We give thanks for the offering. We give thanks for your continuing to share your offering with St. Paul's during this time of COVID-19. Thank you for continuing to share as well your gifts of prayer, compassion, and service to the church of, and God. Let us pray. God of wind and fire and action, Bless these gifts we share with you for the continued work and witness of your church. Bless your gift to us, we pray, to equip us to be your servants in the world. Amen. Our prayers of the people, we continue. Loving and listening God, on this day of Pentecost, we give thanks for your breath of life in us through Jesus Christ. Guide us always to remember Jesus kept his promise and sent the Holy Spirit so we would all be his disciples. As his disciples, we offer prayers today for those who mourn, who are ill, 
for residents, staff, and families of those in long-term care homes and retirement homes. We pray for children and parents and all of us as we continue to find creative and compassionate ways to be family and friends. Lord, hear these all our prayers, and in your love answer, Amen. We trust that in your day, you have prayed the Lord's Prayer, maybe in the morning, maybe in the evening, and maybe together, as I pray it, you will pray it with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. One of the Pentecost hymns is called, On Pentecost They Gathered. Just go to the next piece. On Pentecost They Gathered. just need to find the last piece of music. The last piece of music is Go Now in Peace. And we're going to hear um, Gail play it for us. And we'll see if um, this time I'm a little more connected to the music as um, we hear it. Go now in peace. Never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day. Go now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. Know he will guide you in all you do. Go now in love and show you believe. Reach out to others so all the world can see. God will be there watching from above. Go now in peace, in faith, and in love. Thank you for being together in worship this morning. May God bless you, and may the love of God, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest upon you, all whom you love, near and far. Amen. Amen.